Hey toy family, welcome to the Marsh Amp Toy Hour where we discuss anything and everything designer toys. I'm Gary Ham, and joining me tonight is the queen of cute, Teresa Hawkins. Hello, hello. And the prince of pins, George Gaspar. Nice, that's a good intro, I like that. I miss you guys. It's been like four days since I've seen you, but I miss you. I know. <laughs> it feels like forever. I want to go back. I miss you all. I know. I miss everyone, but I miss the whole event. The event was awesome, but we are talking about DesignerCon, and it's it's only been four days since we left DesignerCon, but it feels like longer than that. So, Teresa George, are you guys still riding the DesignerCon high, or has the post-DesignerCon depression set in? Teresa? Depression. <laughs> depression. I was really good. Like I So I had one day. I got back Monday and Tuesday off work. And Tuesday was really, really good. I was like opening all my toys, looking at all the stuff, posting all those pictures. And then my hell house and work made me feel all poo-poo again. So I'm depressed. <laughs> <laughs> what, about, what about you, George? I always house uh, Dr. A after decon. He comes in. Okay. He comes in the Thursday before, and I pick him up and stays with me for a night before he goes to the hotel for the weekend, and then uh, we hang out for the week after. Usually the Monday to Wednesday kind of thing. So I haven't even had a break yet. We've been running around all over town doing sightseeing stuff, and you know okay. all the all the usual you know hot spots and stores and things that we can try and see until sure. he has to leave. So I brought him to the airport last night, and I went to bed after I got home and. I've just, you know, I've, today's my first day. I've been back on emails and trying to get work done. And so it's been too hectic for me to miss anything. <laughs> it hit me pretty hard when I met, went back to work on Tuesday. I realized on Tuesday morning when I walked in the door at work and it was absolute, everything was on fire, total chaos, designer con was over. Like the drive home on Monday was kind of nice. It was relaxing, kind of decompress and sort of recharge from the drive home. But then Tuesday sort of sucked. And then um, I don't know how to explain it. When you're there at designer con, you're sort of, you're in this um, weird state of euphoria. You're surrounded by toys and old friends and new friends and, you know, people who understand you and, you know, what you collect. And it's just great catching up with everybody and talking toys. And it's such an awesome time. So much, you know, fun had. And then you have to leave your friends behind and you know you're not going to see them again until the next big event. And I think that's sort of when you realize... You know, you get that post designer con depression. It's not that going back to your normal life is bad. It's just, it's just different, and you have to reacclimate yeah. to it. And yeah, no, yeah. It's, it's like you're at home when you're at designer con. You're around your people, like people that understand you and people that like the things you do. And you're not crazy for having a house full of toys. <laughs> you're with... people. Un yeah, people understand this <laughs> right? stupid addiction that we have. And everyone's That's... so nice and happy and it's exciting and you're talking to people you haven't met yet. And then, yeah, it's just like you get a little sad because you don't have it this anymore. Well, I, ex I was talking to Valence and Gaines and she was kind of explaining it. It's like when you first arrive to DesignerCon, uh, we arrived on the Friday before and they went and got our badges and stuff. And everyone's arriving for their booth setups and everything. It's sort of like, have you guys ever been to summer camp? Either one of you? Yes. Kind of. Okay, so it's, it was kind of like that experience for me. Like, summer camp is a great experience for besides that time that I was constipated. <laughs> but other than that, it was a great experience and great memories. And you go back the next year, and you, you kind of know, like, kids you've already been there, counselors that you've already met. It's, it's very much like that movie, uh, Wet Hot American Summer. It's, it's totally like it. And that's kind of what going to designer con is like. It's like going back and seeing old friends and, and just doing silly things and it's you know it's not just designer con it's great going there and buying toys but then you're doing things afterwards and hanging out with people and it's and i think she was right on that same feeling that it has a very summer camp vibe except for where we're also buying toys it's true which is a big hangout session it's fun and i got to see you george in the flesh for the first time yeah, I, I mean, I guess you you were there last year, right? So we probably saw each other, but didn't know who we were. Well, that's yeah. the thing. Like... George, you would totally be a counselor at Camp Decon. <laughs> yeah, if anyone's the counselor, or camp counselor, it's Ben, or he would be running the camp. Yeah, he would be um, camp director, I guess. Yeah, but, but no, it's it's funny you mentioned that, George, because like definitely last year versus this year were pretty different because. Designer Con last year was kind of my first event, and so I didn't really know a ton of people. So, like, I kind of kept to myself a lot more, and, like, I'd walk up to artists at booths and say hi and stuff. But, like, 
after five points with Gary and, and doing the podcast and everything, it was just, I kind of felt like I, I knew more people and I ended up like hanging out and running into people all the time and like talking a lot more. And so it was, it, it's interesting how things kind of evolve over time where is it weird? instead of kind of being this, is it weird as coming from that environment? So last year you went there, you didn't know anybody. Then you go this year, you've been on the podcast, your face is on our promo, promo images every single week. So people can probably be recognizing you. And I know when you were there walking the floor, like people were noticing you and approaching you. How, how, is that sort of a weird experience for you? Yeah, especially from, from an artist perspective. Cause like, yeah, I should know artists, but like it's weird for artists to know me. Like it's just, it's cool. Like Jonathan, John Paul Kaiser. Like near the end, it was like, oh, hey, Teresa. And I was like, what? What? You know my name? Weird. <laughs> <That's> like, weird. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but it's really cool, too. So, like, it's it's fun. It's fun to feel like, um, I don't know, that that people know you and you know them. And it's like a one big happy family. It's it's fun. But, um, but yeah, it, it, it was definitely different this year. I felt like I, I knew a lot more people. And it was a little less of me, like, running around to see every booth and and try to meet artists and more of just kind of hanging out which was which was great yeah you seem pretty laid back like i know going into it and you and Catherine park were talking about getting your excel sheets and prioritizing and lining everything up for the big you know opening on saturday but i hung up out hung out with you on friday night and you know met you at first thing saturday morning and i didn't see you in that crazy state that i thought you were going to be which is sort of surprising i don't know yeah, I mean, part of it may have been my, like, shift in priorities this year. But, yeah, I don't know if it's your fault or what, because I know we were hanging out a lot, and I kind of had a list. But Why are you blaming me? You don't know. You, you kept me all you kept me all chill. I don't know. I just, I, I like, knew what I wanted, but my list was also different this year. You know, I, I had to kind of be a little more different with my budget, and... I was trying to really prioritize and figure out what I wanted to do. And like, you know, it's really, really hard to like balance that because like, if I had a choice, I would obviously buy from like every artist there. Sure. Like I would love to just support everyone. So I, I hate the fact that I can't, like I would, I really, really want to. And so I have I, this year it's like, okay, well, you know, I have, I have a chance to, you know, buy another colorway of something I own or buy something I don't own at all. So it's like, how do you balance that? And and do I buy three small pieces or one big piece. <laughs> I had, I had like, that struggle. Yeah. You know, it's so it's, it's a constant kind of struggle. And I think this year I kind of came into it where I was okay with just trying to get newer things and being okay with maybe not getting in a new colorway or maybe not getting every single thing I would like. And so, yeah, I don't know. It, I felt, I felt even in the moment a little bit disorganized. Like I remember like waiting to go to my first booth and thinking about the first booth. And I'm like, I don't even know where I'm going to go next. Yeah. Like, what am I gonna yeah. Do? It's a, it's a so. little stressful. I mean, you're there. It's, you got the VIP pass. You're in it early, but as you know, there's lines already at these booths lined up. And uh, so you line up in the line. Right. Meanwhile, you know that you're waiting in this line. It could be a 10, 20 minute line before you make your first right. purchase of the day. So, you know, that's happening at your second priority booth and your third, your fourth. And so there's a little bit of panic right. that sets in. But I helped you out. I helped you uh, while you were waiting at your first booth. I yes. made purchases for you at two other booths. And uh, so you didn't miss out on too much. Yeah, you were you were awesome. You helped me out because, yeah, it's it's almost like a part of the game of like, how popular do I think a boost going to be? Do I do I have time to put that low on the list because I think it'll be OK to attain later? Or do I need to try to go to it next? Because I think a lot of people will go there at the beginning, right. too. And like this year was it was nuts. I, I thought there were way more people than last year and things were selling out a lot quicker than I expected across the board. Yeah. I, it was surprising. Like I thought, Oh, like, no, I can wait on that. And then like, we would pass a booth and you'd be like, Oh, didn't you want to like check on that? And I'm like, Oh yeah. And I'm like, Oh my God, there's only like two left. It was just kind of, uh, it was crazy. Let me tell you how bad I am at this. So the first booth that I waited at was the paradise toys booth. And I wanted to get costing lungs spooky. That was my number one priority. So I waited in line. I got it. I was excited. And uh, I walked by Sunday night, and that toy was still available. You know what I mean? Like, I could have just made that my last on my list and gotten everything else first. But live and learn. 
Yeah, it, and well, it's funny. You never really know, and that, that's surprising because I know we both really like that artist and felt like his stuff was going to be really hard to get. But yeah, it, it's it's funny. It's part of the game almost of figuring out where you need to go and what will be really popular. And if you know, you kind of have to make that call in the moment of like, okay, if I could get this or this, which one would I be sad like more sad to miss out on? And like, you have to gamble and and choose, but. Um, but yeah, George, I don't know. I mean, I know you were vending, but like, did you, did you have anything you were trying to like search for and buy that you were kind of scrambling around for? Um, yeah, I mean, I was luckily this year I was, even though I had a booth and was vending, I was more, um, I was showcasing a friend's work. So I didn't really have too much for sale. So I didn't really have to worry about being at the booth because it was more about his art and his character that was for sale. So I was able to leave a lot this year and it was nice getting to really walk around and, you know, see a lot of the stuff. I, I went right, you know, straight to the Miss Muju booth, the, the Muju World booth for Mr. and Miss Muju. Mm-hmm. And uh, I got their, you know, their new things that I really wanted and got to, you know, meet them for the first time after being fans of theirs for years online. And that was great. Um, yeah. So that was like that was the important one for me. And then the other one was the uh, Sad Salesman booth. And I actually had I had I f- had forgotten to make it over there right away, and I was worried because I actually didn't get there until Sunday, and I was like, <laughs> "Crap, this thing's gonna be sold out." But again, like you did, luckily I went over there and it, he still had a couple yeah. left, so like I ended up making it. But I was worried as I was heading over there, like, "Crap, I didn't get there yesterday," because um, Saturday I yeah. did try and stay at the booth a bit, and Sunday was when I really walked around. Yeah, it's funny. You remember Gary? Like, I'd be like, oh, crap. Like, I meant to go to that booth. And then, like, I'd, I'd go and I'd be like, no, no, like, I need to be good. And then, like, the next day I'm like, shoot, I never went back. What if they don't have any this time? Like, ah, it's just, it's, it's, it's what funny. What was funny is you told me to be, George, she told me to be her mom. She had a budget and she didn't want to break the budget. She <laughs> said, Gary, you're going to have to reel me in because I'm going to see things that I'm going to want to, you know, spontaneously purchase. And, Gary, you're going to have to keep me in control. And uh, I was the worst at that. If she would see something, you, you I would I would terrible, see her reaction. To, I know, but I you, that whatever that thing you were looking at was making you happy. I'm like, well, if you like it, just buy it, you know. But uh, <laughs> so I was <Yes>. terrible. <laughs> I don't think I prevented yes. any purchases. I just made you probably buy more. Actually, no. you'd be like, that's only XX dollars, <laughs> or oh no, that's cute. And I'd be like, gosh darn it, Gary Ham, you're supposed to be helping me. But I mean, there were a few times you helped me too. Cause like, I'd be like, all right, like, well, if I get one, like, should I get this color or this color? Cause I also went to um, the Muji World booth and um, it was fantastic talking to them. It's always fun when people come to uh, an event for the first time. And so I thought they had, they had brought a ton of stuff and their displays, like the little uh, tree stands and all of so that. Cool. Yeah, such, such a cool booth. And so it's just, I don't know, it's, it's so hard in the moment. And again, it's like, it's, it's so hard for me as a collector and a lover of so many things to have to tell myself no and, and not be able to buy certain stuff. So like there were actually some booths that I knew I would be bad at. So like I intentionally did not go right away because like I I knew that if they they had stuff that I would be bad right. like that I would work so mm-hmm. <laughs> I had to like hold off and wait and like wait go for them later. wait for them to sell out of the thing <laughs> right be like okay okay like yes like you'll sell out of the stuff that I'd be really bad at buying I'll feel okay because other people got it and other people bought it so it's not like no one's buying your stuff still be able to hang out and talk but yeah so it's 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 a funny struggle. And yes, you were terrible. You're like, oh, yeah, just get it. Oh, yeah, just get it. You're terrible. You're terrible mother. That was awful. You were actually probably better at reining me back in because I remember one of the things on my first things on my list, George, was a costing long um, Labubu figure. This is something I've mentioned on the show a lot of times. It's something I haven't been able to obtain. It's an Eastern produced toy. Always seems to sell out. And um, the wrong gallery booth had three of them in the extra large size, which is like a 12 inch size. My budget was two hundred dollars, and that toy by itself was a hundred and fifty, and the only oh, and they geez. only had three of them. So I had to make that decision, and, and you know Teresa was kind of like, "Well, do you want to get the one toy, or do you want to get m- multiple toys for the same price that you're getting the one?" So that was the decision I made not to get that. So you three lucky jerks who ended up buying the Labubu figure that I wanted, I hate <laughs> you. But in return, I got many more toys to fit my budget and. So I'm much happier as a result of that. 
Well, and you were torturing yourself because you kept going kept back, going back. And, like, looking. Every... and you're like, oh, it's still there. Oh, it's still there. And I'm like, stop going back. You're going to end up And I felt a sense. It. Once it was gone, I felt that sense of relief. Like, oh, God, thank you. Like, I don't. It was torturing me. Every time I walked by, it was just staring at me. And I loved it more and more. And then Ryaniak was telling me, like, Gary, you're never going to see this toy again. Like, how hard have you been looking for this toy? He's like, just buy it. It's, you know, it's, it's you're not going to get the opportunity probably ever again. And he's right. But at the same time, like. You got a budget. You can't break it. Christmas is around the corner and all that sort of stuff. And, uh, yeah, I had to pass it up. It's hard. Like I said, if I could, I would literally buy from, like, every artist there. Let's, because let's talk about – so you that? said that Designer Con was different for you this year, as in, you know, meeting people and talking to people. And, you know, you weren't just going solo this year. But as a convention itself, it was it larger for you? Like, was it any different than maybe, say, you saw it last year? Oh, no, it was – Definitely different. I don't know if you all, if you felt it, did you, I assume you've been there, George, every year, right? Pretty much. Yeah. But yep. I, it not only seemed busier overall, but like there were so many lines, like the lines to get tickets and the lines outside the buildings yeah. to get in. It, it was crazy. Did you see any of that, George? Oh yeah. There was definitely for like, especially Saturday for sure. It was, uh, yeah. It, yeah, it, it was way busier Saturday than it normally yeah. was. Um, I don't know what, you know, what changed this year or what, you know, maybe it was the, the advertising they did, the, you know, the billboards and the flags all over town or I don't know what, but the, it also uh, wasn't on the same weekend as that CTN that always seems to compete with the convention too. That's true. Yeah. It was a different, a different weekend. So maybe a lot more of those people were able to attend, but I, could, could there possibly be that many people attending that other show as I well? Don't know that like that don't go it's weird it was definitely it was definitely way busier um it was nice to see for the convention but it was yeah it was definitely packed inside which caused a lot of lines and i like to think that was because of us pretty much promoting designer con all year long uh we do have that many listeners and they just slam the convention there were a lot of lines and I've, i know i haven't been in the last three years so it's was greatly different than when i first saw it i mean amazing growth uh, the two different halls have opened, and then even just driving in when you go to park, a lot of the surrounding parking garages were sold out, and that was something that never happened the last three years when I was there. And oh. all the lines out front were ridiculous. Um, plus, there was that I don't know, was it a happenstance, George, that there was like a street fair going on at the mall across the street? Oh, I'm sure the city planned that conveniently, right? They knew it was gonna be a popular event and just kind of piggyback ride off of this event. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I actually completely forgot about our attempt to park on <laughs> Sunday. <laughs> George, I, I refuse to pay, you know, the $20 for parking. Some of these, you know, off the path garages were wanting to pay. So we yeah. circled. We ended up, you know, finding actually a parking spot out in there in the suburbs a little bit. And uh, it wasn't that far away. But, yeah, we probably spent an extra, I don't know what you say, 20, 30 minutes driving around to find a, a free parking spot. <laughs> I, it was worth it. But I was you know, like, oh it's, my gosh. the parking <laughs> under the structure, if you get there on time, is generally not sold out. If you get there, you know, if you get there on time or a little early, and it's only thirteen dollars. Correct. How much? How much is your time worth, dude? <laughs> no, I, I understand, <laughs> but uh, I was a man on a mission. I got, I got great, like free parking on uh, the street on um, on Saturday. So I kind of wanted to get the same thing on Sunday and. And we did. We ended up finding some street out in the suburbs a little bit. And funny thing about it, George, so we wanted to navigate back to it. So I had Teresa take a picture of the cross streets, and one of the cross streets was Waldo, Waldo Street. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> so what were we talking about? Oh, the growth of the show. So, yeah, I haven't been there in three years, so I definitely noticed um, – how large it's gotten. It's expanded into the different hall, two different halls. And I didn't mind the, the main hall connected to the other one with that little hallway. I didn't mind that as much. I didn't even really notice that one, but I did notice the hall C that disconnect where you had to walk across the way to get to it. Yeah. I know everyone said that there's no bad booth, but I did not really care for hall C that much. I just, it was extremely crowded in there. The, the aisles were very tight. You, if you had a backpack or a bag, everyone's bumping into each other. It was getting warm in there with the windows. And once it got dusk, it's, the lighting got really dim. And I don't know. I just, I feel like I know it's going to be relocating and I think it's, it's going to be great to finally and hopefully have all the vendors under one booth and not have all these, these different rooms and, and all that sort of stuff. But I'm not saying there are bad, any bad booths because obviously the ones in hall C, there were a lot of sellouts in there and people did get there. Yeah. But I just, 
I just didn't care for that room at all. It's true, because, like, most everything's basically in the same building. You walk in at the entrance, you've got kind of the, the lanes off to the left where they have, like, the custom shows and a few booths over there and the DJ and all that. And then you've got, obviously, that front room and then the main hall. And Hall C is kind of this, sadly, like, a little bit of a displaced child where you have to walk outside to get to it. And I agree, like, well, I mean, we knew it was there and we went there. It was really hard to walk in. It was almost like they had, like, one or two too many rows of booths or tables set up because the space you had to walk was so tight. You almost were kind of in this weird single file thing, like squishing between people. And it was really hard to even just stop and look at booths because you were like squished in of people trying to kind of walk through. So it was unfortunate, but, um, but yeah, so I agree. I mean, I hope that the new space allows for everyone kind of just to be all in the same area and not really split up like that. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that is that is going to be one of the nice things about the new convention center, even though it is a bit farther for a lot of the locals right here. Um, the people that travel in, you know, they shouldn't really notice any kind of hiccups or anything because you're traveling in, you're either going to Pasadena or now you're going to Anaheim, so it doesn't really matter. But, uh, you know, for the locals, they got to drive a bit further. But the nice thing will be everyone in one room. I mean, that's just, it's just going to be a better, it's just going to be a better fit like that. It's yeah. It's the way I'd rather it be personally. Um, you know, I, I, I don't like even the hall A and B. I don't like the separation. I don't like the, you know, one room is, has got carpet and it's dimly lit and it's like a little atmosphere. Yep. And then the other one's like a regular convention. So it's like, I don't know. I just rather everybody in one room. We're all doing it together. It's one big convention. It just I think it's going to feel more cohesive to me. Yeah. Yeah, I want to talk about that yeah. relocating well, to Anaheim, but let's uh, let's continue talking about DesignerCon a little bit. So, it was weird walking around with Teresa. I've never walking around with a true collector who you had like over thirty things on your list, and your head was on a constant swivel. Like, oh my god, Gary, look at this! <laughs> oh, oh my god, Gary, look at this! You were so excited about everything. You're so excited about talking to everybody. And George, we couldn't walk. Ah. You couldn't walk 10 feet, and this is probably the same for you, George. You can't walk 10 feet without running into someone that you know. And then you carry that conversation for 10 minutes with somebody, and then you go, like, okay, see you later. We're going to keep shopping. And then you run into somebody else. So for us to go up and down the rows, it took 30 minutes per row at least. And even then, oh. we still missed t- seeing tons of booze. I don't know why, but – you know, you get back home and you're going through Instagram. And you're like, I didn't, oh my God, I, I didn't stop at the Lulu Bell booth or I, I didn't go see, you know, Paul Frank's booth or there, we, for some reason, we, I don't know, we just kind of missed a lot of things. Yeah. Um, there were booths that I was walking back and forth past and still missed them. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like you just don't even realize like, oh crap, that's the booth I was looking for. And it's just, it's literally right there next to me. And you just, yeah, you just miss it. I think it's just because yeah. it is I mean, popular we... now. There's a lot of crowds. And I think a lot, every time I, I know I walk by the Lulu Bell booth and I think there was just a crowd or a line. I'm like, oh, I'll come back later. And I just never made it back around. Yeah. I mean, we, we tried like doing like a snaking system where like we started literally at booth 100 the very beginning front left thinking like we would literally just go down each row, like snaking back and forth. And it just wasn't working. Like all of a sudden we had realized like we spent an hour going down like five booths because we kept stopping and talking and seeing people, which is great. I mean, I absolutely love it, but I was like, I think we're going to have to like, I don't think we can do this. I think we have to like go to specific booths, like go to the ones that we're thinking about. And I think that was part of the problem. Like, You just, and yet, I mean, at one point, literally, like, we realized, like, oh, we hadn't even been to the the corner booth. Like, we hadn't gone to see Kevin. And, like, it had been, like, almost all the way. Did we even go on Saturday? Like, we just, it's just all of a sudden you realize. And, like, we had been passing it multiple times throughout the day. And all of a sudden I was like, oh, my God, how had we not stopped and said hi? Yeah. It's funny because we spent so much time at the My Plastic Heart booth and uh, Andrew Bell's booth, and they were directly across from the Corners booth. And we, I don't know, we just somehow completely missed the Corners booth being there. Yeah. I used the PowerCore app that had the booth finder thing and all that. Um, I I got it on Saturday. You know, I have the PowerCore app already from the last – I don't know, two comic cons ago or whenever Don first started bringing it over here. And uh, that's mm-hmm. Don data dev that we're talking about. He's been on the podcast and uh, I, I freaking loved it on like on Sunday, I was having so much fun with the power core thing, just running around, like finding booze. And it's funny. Cause like, I always go to, I always try and go to the Roto Fuji, Roto Fuji booth. Cause I like 
you know, I like them. I like their booth. And on Saturday, I had forgotten to go over there, but they were in the PowerCore app. I was like, oh, you know what? They're in the app. Let me go over there. I'll scan the thing while I'm there. Say hello. And yeah. I ended up buying a toy just because I was, you know, just because the PowerCore thing reminded me to go over there. Mm-hmm. I, I could see such a cool potential for that power core thing. If they could like, it would be awesome if there was a way that every booth was on it, like everyone was participating and like ahead of the show, you can go in the app and like organize things, like put them in the, like, these are all the ones that I want to make sure I go to. And then like when you're there, you can scan it to make sure that you remember you were there or remember to go there. And then, like, at the end, like, after you've got hit all the ones you want to go to, maybe you go back to the regular app and look up, like, oh, it's, I, you know, I would like to see this. Like, maybe I'm interested in this. And you can start going to all the different booths and, like, checking them off the list. Yeah, you know, it's funny you mentioned that because Friday night, I was like, all right, I'm, like, not prepared. Like, I've got to spend, like, a minute to, like, figure stuff out. And I'm so visual that just having, like – like trying to fill out like a spreadsheet, for example, with like names and boosts doesn't work for me. So I, I'm always much better with the actual map. And so what I ended up doing is I finagled my way to like use the vendor mapping system on the website to star different boosts. And then I was taking screenshots on my phone and then creating collages so I could have like a starred map to reference. But it'd be really cool if there was like an app that I could have used for the event that tied in with like both the games of power core and all that, as well as being able to flag and tag and like, look at your map and stuff. Um, I really like that idea. I think that'd be really cool. Yeah. I just, it has, I could see like a lot of good in the app, like a lot of, cause it like it, it has the picture of like either like what's new at the booth or maybe the company's logo. Then it like turns in, you know, colors it in when you, when you access it, when you're at their booth. And like, I, the only thing that bothers me is like nothing's in any kind of order. So it's just this random, like, you can't, like, start at the beginning of the show and, like, go through and find all the booze. And I get it because they want you to, like, you know, dodge around the show and do all this stuff. But I'd much rather use it as, like, a a system or a way to order, you know, the things that I want to see rather than just this random gaggle of booths that they've chosen, you know? Right. Yeah. You know, talking about hidden gems and finding little secret things that you weren't expecting, kind of like this game, George. Of all the toys at DesignerCon, of all the excitement that I saw Teresa squealing over how cute things were, we went to Ralph's on Friday night to kind of just get some snacks and stuff. Ralph's is a Ralph's is a grocery store for people that don't know. <laughs> yeah, and in California, you they don't give you like bags at checkout, uh, but they give you an option to purchase bags, and so Teresa purchased a ten cent plastic bag. And oh my God, George, she was so excited <laughs> over this 10 cent bag, like the thickness. Oh my God, Carrie, the thickness. And she, she, I, of everything at the designer con, that was the single most important thing to her. What was that bag? So what you're saying is, is the thickness that counts. It's the for thickness her. that counts. Uh, yes. Oh my gosh, you all. <laughs> stop making it. Easy. It was ridiculous. Oh, you said just like Kyle in the freaking Facebook group. No, so like, but I think it was like the shock and surprise because I, I was like, okay, like, where did I get the bags? And I went up to one of the people working there. I was like, hey, like, I paid 10 cents for a bag. Can I get a bag? And she's like, paper or plastic? And I was like, I don't know, I guess plastic. And like, I'm just used to the plastic bags that I have at any other grocery store, like a thin plastic bag. But this thing was literally like the most hardcore thick industrial bag I've ever seen it was just so surprising but I was like oh my god and of course I brought it home because it was the coolest freaking plastic bag I've ever seen I don't know I love toys it had nothing to do with not liking the toys but it was pretty exciting well that's that's (laughs) California law right there we've uh California has eliminated the use of plastic bags at stores so you don't get bags anymore you have to bring your own And uh, they are allowed to now sell them, which is the reusable bag. You're supposed to be able to use that like 40 or 50 times is what they suggest. Okay, makes sense. All right. That baby, I'm going to put it in my car and I'm going to test it. I got a a trunk load of those bags. I think a booth at Designer Con should sell these bags with Designer Con logos on them for excitable collectors like Teresa. And, (laughs) George, we decided that she was saying cute so much at the convention that we were walking around with Scott Catler. And we just decided that... There's no other word. We looked into thesaurus. Is there another good word that you know she could possibly use for the word cute? And there really isn't. There's adorable and other stuff. And we decided, so the next time she says the word cute, she says Teresa. 
And it was actually hilarious to walk around. She actually went along with the game. We didn't think she would. So the next few times we went to Boo, she's like, oh my God, that's so Teresa. And it was hilarious to hear <laughs> Teresa saying that. It was weird, but I don't know. She went along with it. <laughs> well, it was funny. And so like then like you now, like now we're talking and he'll be like, hey, look, look at how Teresa this is. <laughs> <laughs> But it's funny. So, like, I'd be like, oh, cute. I mean, oh, Teresa. And then, like, people would look at us and it'd be funny. But I thought it was hilarious. And I'm more than fun making fun of myself. Because I do say cute a all the time. Lot. Because it's just the perfect word. This is why you're the queen of cute. Uh, I mean, there's a cute. lot of great memorable moments. Like, one of the weirdest ones, I think you know, every time she would introduce me, George, to someone that maybe I didn't know or, you know, go, you go to Unbox. She's like, oh, you got to meet, you know, Dan. And uh, she'd be like, Dan, this is Gary Ham." And I'm like, I, for me, it's weird to be introduced as my full name. Like when my wife introduces me to her friends, it's like, this is my husband, Gary. But when you're at a convention, she's, Teresa was always, this is Gary Ham. This is Gary Ham. And I understand that's probably the way, the best way to say it. So people would know maybe who I am or, you know, put a, a name to my work or my face or something like that. But it was weird for me to hear that over and over again. And I, I had to point out, I'm like, stop calling me Gary Ham. Just say, this is Gary. <laughs> But yeah, it, but I, I could see where she, why sense. she would be doing it, because then it's it links to the Gary Ham name from the toys and the podcast, like. Right, like, and I said, like, if I had introduced you, George, I probably would have said George Gaspar, like it, or I would have Garth said Bar. like, Garth hey, Bar. <laughs> Garth Bar. which to me is um, weird. That but makes like, sense, oh, but it's just weird hearing my but full no, name. Like, but like, I would have said like, hey, this is Aaron of Martian Toys, or like, I don't know, I just. You know, hey, this has been from plastic car, my plastic cart. Like, I feel yeah, like I in the toy world, like, it's just drawing that connection. And so I joked, I was like, well, I can say, like, Super Ham, like, this is Super Ham no, instead of Gary no. Ham. But, like, it's it's just to me. I think more sense. people would know the name Gary Ham than Super Ham. Well, of course. That's why I stuck with Gary Ham. I bet like, this is Mr. <laughs> Mr. I Gary Ham. I feel like Hamm, when you mention but... someone's, like, when you mention my full name, you were expecting that person to have that light bulb moment, like, oh my God, okay, yeah, Gary Ham. But if they don't, then it's like, okay, then you could have just gone with Gary. It's, you don't have to say my full name, but. Yeah, but <laughs> it, it gives that opportunity to say, like, hey, like, have you heard the name Gary Ham? Like, to me, yeah. just saying Gary just makes you a Joe Schmo. You're no Joe Schmo, you're Gary Ham. Next to your name tags at the door, full name tags. For everybody. Oh, God. I wish everyone in life wore name tags. I like the idea of name tags. Maybe next yeah. year, George. Let's do I, it. I forget I forget every name of everyone I've ever met at all times. So <laughs> I'm the worst at that. <laughs> so I, yes. I don't know. Like, I'm, I, I, I hate I that. It. Yes. I feel so bad because especially when I'm like either I don't recognize the face yet or whatever. Like, because the very first time I went around – so last year at designer con, like I ended up starting to introduce myself as my username on Instagram because people, I knew people through that at the time. So like, I'd be like, Hey, if I said, Hey, I'm Teresa, most people didn't know what I said. Hey, if I'm TM Hawk 24, they'd be like, Oh yeah, yeah, you follow me. I know who you are. So like, it, it's just a thing. And like, I hate it because like Scott Catler came up to me oh, and, um, <laughs> like, he was like, hey, Teresa. And I'm like literally staring at him with like blank eyes. And I'm like, I don't know who this is. And he's like, it's me, Scott. And I'm like, Scott, Scott. And he's like, Scott Tatler. And I was like, oh, my gosh. <laughs> but he had freaking long hair, which I'd only ever seen pictures of him with short hair. And it completely threw me off. But I was like, mm -hmm. I just didn't know. And so, oh, man. And I hate I, it. I I've had that experience so many times where, I mean, I, I know, it, it, I mean, that kind of sounds weird now that I say it out loud, but. Like where someone would have, they, you know, they were a toy break viewer or something. And, you know, it was, you know, 10 years worth of watching me every week. And they come up and they're like, hey, George. And I'm just like, I don't, do I know this person? I can't remember if I met <laughs> yeah. them. I don't know if I'm supposed to know right. them. And I, I just, I play along. Yeah. Like I, yeah, I just have to keep, I have to go with it because I'm like, crap. And then half the time it's, I forgot because I meet too many, I, I meet somebody at a show and I can't remember it or, I have, you know, you know, when you're at a show, there's so many other things that you're thinking of. You meet somebody, they walk away, you immediately forget what their name is because you're stupid. <laughs> um, like, you know, that's what happens to me at least. And I just, so I'm half the time it's I forgot who they are, or half the time it's they know me but I don't know who they are. Yeah, exactly. So it's kind, it's yeah. like it's tough, but like, and I'm sure you'll get that from this, you know, where people who are listeners to this and they say hello and 
you're like, I, do I know you? But they listen to you every week, so they feel like they right. know you. We did get quite a bit of that of listeners approaching us and just – and but they would immediately say like, hey, we're a listener. Uh, we enjoy watching the show. So thank you to everyone who did approach us and tell us you know, that they enjoy the show and have been listening and, and stuff like that. That was great to you know have that response and meet a lot of the listeners. And um, I know another weird thing too, George, is we met a lot of – like new people to the convention, a lot of people that came from overseas in the Muju world. And first time we got to meet sad salesmen, we would try to go around and meet a lot of the people that, um, that were on the show, you know, that we wanted to, you know, introduce ourselves and, you know, meet face to face. But at the same time, like on come, come Sunday, there was a lot of people that we had not seen yet. And we wanted to find them like seriously, silly K. Did you meet silly George? Oh yeah. A few times. Okay. How awesome was that? She was yeah. awesome. Yeah, she was. She's so great. We were trying to track her down, so you know, Teresa would text her like, "Where are you?" And she's, "Oh, I'm over here." And then we go there, and she's not there. She's moved on somewhere else. And finally, we got her to meet us outside the uh, the baby tattoo booth, and uh, it was hilarious, George, because we meet her, and you know, she's just the sweetest person. We just wanted to give everyone hugs, but she was wearing these huge, like, hooked earrings, George. And every she hugged, I think, Teresa three or four times just in this little chat that we had. And every time she would pull away from Teresa, Teresa's hair would get caught up in her earrings, and it was hilarious. <laughs> and then, uh, and then when I was talking with her, and uh, apparently I didn't know this is this is probably like the highlight of my entire weekend. We were standing there talking to Silly, and I had my arms crossed, and uh, all of a sudden she just takes my aunt arms, she grabs my arms, George, and she puts them at my side. So Gary. You're being closed off by closing your arms. Put your arms at your side. <laughs> open to the conversation. And it was hilarious. That she, you know, most Who would do that? Most people would just not do that. And she is just, I don't know, the most warm and genuine and funny. And I don't know. It was a great experience meeting Silly. Yeah. She gave yeah. me a, a, bag, a bag of German candy. I felt so, so special. And she ran out and didn't get to give you one, Gary. So she loves me more because I got one and you didn't. It's because you were closed off. I Even know. Those I was crossed off. I didn't get the candy. I get it. <laughs> I get it, silly. No, I want to get silly back on. She is, gosh, she's so fun to talk to. We tried walking around with yeah, her, no. but I, I thought, you know, Teresa and I thought we were getting stopped every five minutes. Like, silly was stopping like every one minute talking to someone. Every, every person. Literally, she knew every person in the entire hall. It was hilarious. <laughs> yeah, I always, I always love meeting with the people who, you know, who like what you do. <laughs> It's, it's always nice. <laughs> it makes going to these things worth, you know, worth going to them. Yeah. No, it's it's fun running into people. And so, yeah, if if you ever run into me and I like look like an idiot, like a deer in headlights, just just know that I am struggling and tell me who you are. <laughs> <laughs> there, there, are, there are so many moments, George. And there's you're so, Can I say that you're innocent, Teresa? I mean, <laughs> yeah, there was. Um, Okay, so the deer in the headlight was there. There was a moment where we were, we were thinking about going to the uh, VIP after party, but the line was humongous, so we were like, "Well, let's just let's just walk to to dinner instead." So we start walking past this huge line at the VIP party, and Teresa's like, "Ah, oh, it smells like skunk. What's that smell?" It's like, and she's saying it really loud, like everyone in the line can hear. It's like, "Ah, oh, it's the gunk," and it's it's. She didn't know what pot smelled like. It was the smell of pot, George. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> So like I'm sit- I'm literally like going oh my god like why does it smell like skunk and like I'm literally like saying it out loud talking to everyone <laughs> as we're walking by and then Jordan of horrible adorables was like you know that it's like pot smell like and laughing at me and like even at the moment like she's saying that like I'm not getting it it's not registering to me oh, yeah. that I guess people who smoke pot can also smell like skunk or something but I was such an idiot like I'm just walking around I'm like oh my god where is all these skunks coming from it's legal weed California there a, baby there is definitely <laughs> a stench okay. in the air and I'm I'm pretty ignorant to it too I can't tell the difference if it's pot or cloves so but when you're in an event like designer con I know it's pot and uh it, you know, I'm sure it was oh yeah, so, it's, yeah. A, it's pretty much everywhere <laughs> It's California. It's nothing allowed. wrong with that. I got We're allowed to do it. it. Yeah. Looking back, <laughs> you just slap your head a little. You're like, oh, my gosh. It's so stupid. But I didn't, how am I supposed to know? Anyway. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, I have so many moments like that, though. They're called Gary moments. That's what my friends call them, just stupid moments or it, it, moments of complete ignorance. And uh, it's nice to know I'm not the only one. Thanks. You know, welcome to the, <laughs> join the party, Teresa. <laughs> well, you know, speaking of, of VIP, you know, um, 
So we were thinking like vendors would be able to get in, but they were like pretty, pretty hardcore and strict about like who could get into the event. And so um, I was thinking, oh, like I've got VIP, I can figure out a way to get them in. But the line was like ridiculously long, ridiculously long. And so we just decided to not worry about it because we were all hungry. But I know you got in, George, right? So I'm curious what uh, what the VIP party was like. Uh, it's really not for me. Um, I'm I'm not that I'm not the target audience for a VIP event. But yeah, I did I did stop by for a minute just because I like to uh, support the things that Ben's putting together. And uh, it was it was in that Masonic Lodge around the corner, and it was kind of cool. It was uh, you know they had the big photo booth set up in the front like they always do, where you can you know take your pictures and get it on that little what's that stuff called that uh, where it, it's like 3D 3D photo lenticular like lenticular photos. Oh, okay. um, and then downstairs they had a uh, a bar set up where you can get drinks in the Gary Baseman designed cups. And then there was uh, like a DJ playing live, you know, live music and there's all sorts of dancing going on, all that kind of stuff. I literally spent probably about an hour in the Masonic library with the head, the headmaster of the the lodge, just chatting about Mason stuff, <laughs> asking questions oh, and things. So like I was completely like I was in a quiet room just in the library with the head, the head past master <laughs> of that Masonic lodge, just asking questions. Um, yeah, I had no interest in VIP parties. Like at one point the door opened cause security kept checking on who was in the library and, uh, the door opened and everyone standing outside is, you know, behind the, the, the door where they're selling merch and everything. The door opens, they all look in and see me standing in there and they just start cracking up laughing. Cause here <laughs> I am standing in the, in the library at the Masonic lodge. So yeah, it was, uh, it was a good time for me. I don't yeah. care. I don't care about drinking and all that stuff. And is that where yeah. everyone was getting those Fez hats? Uh, yeah, there was uh, Ben had some Fezes made for the VIP event because oh, it was gosh, in the, Mason, yeah. the okay. Masonic Lodge. So he made Fezes. But no one wore it the next day. I wore it. You look good in a Fez. You were rocking that Fez. You look good in it. Yeah. You got to. Like, when else am I going to get to wear a Fez? Like, I got to wear the Decon Fez at Decon. You should wear it all the time. I'll wear it next yeah. year. That's for sure. Wear that to the grocery store next time you go. You'll get, get some it. good looks. Yeah. Get my stick bags. That's right. Yes. <laughs> now, George, you did not make it to the Marsham meetup. It's okay. I we, did. we had fun without you. Uh, should we talk about that a little, Teresa? Sure. I just didn't want to drive anywhere. That's why. Yeah, I, I totally get that. I think when you're in Pasadena, most people just want to walk around or it's late and they don't want to drive in a car. I, no, I know it was a lot of five, ten minute drive. So, um, yeah, we so we missed you, but and we had a great turnout. I don't want to rattle off all the names of people who showed up because I'm afraid I'm going to forget someone. So thank you to everyone who did show up. We had a, a blast hanging out with you. Um, it's definitely a, a memorable night. So thank you very much for making it so. And, um, oh, George. Uh, so Eric Alphen, sad salesman, he decided to carpool with um, <laughs> uh, Teresa and I. And there was the weirdest moment. So I parked the car in the Baltimore parking lot. And I'm still in the car, and Eric's like already out of the car. Next thing I know, he's standing in front of my my headlights, and I look up, and he has a snail like crawling on him. And so <laughs> I get out of the car, and someone left out. I don't know if there's such a thing as snail food, but there's a bunch of snails all over the place. It was like the most surreal and perfect was, sad salesman moment. And Teresa's taking all the photos and everything. It was hilarious, and like there were like a lot of them, George. So like you know, like the little like there's like a little lip, right? So there's like a like a bushes and plants or whatever like planted in front of the row you park at but they were just like all crawling around and like hanging out but yeah he's like picking one up and then i'm getting ready to take a photo and he's like no wait a minute it's scared and so like we're waiting for its eyes to pop back out which was like the craziest thing to watch because literally they just somehow like push back out of its face it's insane but it was cracking <laughs> me up yeah that that was one of the uh photos i posted because i was like of all the things like we find a snail family like chilling in and and, and eric's just picking him up and checking him out it was it was it was hilarious that was That's a, awesome that was a fun night i wish you made it george but um well, we played what three games of bowling played some air hockey uh some drinks ate a bazooki and uh a lot of interesting bowling styles. I don't want to out anybody, but let's just say <laughs> every, it was funny watching everyone's different bowling styles. And, um, yeah, that's all I'll say about that. It was fun. How, how terrible artists are at bowling is what you're trying um, to say? Yeah. Well, let's just say that Teresa made a comment that seeing artists bowl 
made her realize that they're just regular people. <laughs> Artists are human, George. Y'all are just y'all are just like me and my you know, just like me. You can't pull for nothing. Like literally, I'm like, all right, like am I about to sit down with all these people who can get like two hundreds, no problem? Or are they like me where like getting a hundred is like some sweet thing? It's like that that trophy you yeah. try to get, three digits. There was a lot yeah. of gutter balls that night. Yeah. A lot. So it felt and, uh, good. It felt like I was at, at home again with my family because I was like, I can't bowl for shit. <laughs> so I'm it, glad I'm not alone. I don't know if she's going to share, but she's got some good, you know, some good video because a lot of us have um, little bounces to our step or these weird little, I don't know, rituals that they would do as they're waiting to bowl. And especially Rosansky. He would wait about, I don't know, he would wait about a minute before he'd bowl and he would do this weird thing where he, he would raise it over his uh, now George. He actually, he's, you know, so Gary Rosansky, he's, he's from the UK, but he packed a bowling glove specifically for the event. So he shows up with his own glove. He's the glove. really, yeah. Yes. It's hilarious. And he, Oh my God. He kept trying to stick in my face. And I'm like, I don't want, I don't know where your bowling glove has been. Stop sticking that near me. And then he didn't want to get shoes, so he just threw it like he was going to bowl his regular shoes, but they were bothering him. They weren't good enough, so he kicked him off. So, like, half the time he was playing and just socks. But he'd get up there, and, yes, he had this whole, like, he'd, like, bring the ball of his head and, like, wiggle it down like genie in the bottle and, like, line up his feet on a certain spot. And I'm like, I just get up there, and I aim for the middle arrow, and I go. Like, <laughs> But he was good. I mean, he had some skills. Yeah, he, was. He, he was going for a turkey there at one time. And then I borrowed the glove and bowled the strike. So there is something to his glove. There's a little bit of magic. Little magic. Mm-hmm. The glove. I should have tried it. I well, I couldn't try it because I'm left-handed. That's right. He wanted me to try his glove, but uh, it's right. Hand- it's for like a right-hander. So thank goodness they had like little kid bowling balls because I, <laughs> I have very <laughs> arm. And so like the the ball, I was bowling with a seven pound ball because <laughs> I couldn't pick anything else up. They were all too heavy. <laughs> But, of course, they're, like, the ones with, like, chunks out of it because, like, kids, like, drop them and slam them and all that. But, hey, I got really, really close. I got a 98. I was two points away from the the glorious three digits. She really <sighs> wanted to hit three digits, and she just blew it on the I last screwed up. And I blew it. I, I, I was doing really, really good, and then I, I, I just I lost it in the end. I fell apart. So close. Now, did, did anyone get the Comic Con? Not the Comic Con, but the convention crud. Anyone get sick? I know I did. You did? I, I'm a little bit cold. I, I was worn out, like dead tired. I I thought it was just from talking too much. I was feeling sort of a maybe a scratchy throat, like late on Sunday, and I just figured it was just from too much talking. You're all you're doing is talking, and uh, but no, I got home on Monday and I was just so tired, and then it carried through. I'm feeling better now, but. Tuesday and Wednesday, I felt really de- – maybe it was a depression, but I felt really just wiped out and exhausted, and I felt a little bit nasally and a little – you know, but neither one of you got picked it up? No, I, well, I'm all right. I think uh, I think Ben may have started to come down with something yesterday. Um, I was talking to him, and he looked a little – he looked a little under the weather, but that's, I think, lack of sleep. Yeah. How trustable is the – doing the convention for him? Like, I – you know, he seems pretty laid back during the convention, but I imagine it's super stressful to do. Like, you probably feel like the weight of the world on your shoulders probably, you know, leading up to it, right? Oh, yeah. There's a there's especially, like, you know, the the direct right before and during and after. Because, like, like, I don't know, you remember that big giant Ron English statue that was out front? Yeah, yeah. Like, all of a sudden, the day after the convention, he's got to figure out how to get that out of there. Like, the guy that brought it wasn't taking it. Oh, no. So like there was no plan. Like, no one had planned. Like so that was just like. And also when they brought it, there was no plan to get it to stand up or to get like there was no one planned to bring a crane or anything. Like the guy just brought it. And was like here you go, set it up yourself, jerks. Oh man, <laughs> <laughs> that was cool and, uh, though. That's everyone was taking photos with it. That was like the the photo spot to take that photo in front of that with the designer, you know, designer con opening behind it. Yeah, I mean it's definitely great to have it out there. It's just. It sucks when you have to wake up at five in the morning trying to figure out how to get a truck to get it over there to get it out of there. True. Oh, <laughs> so like you don't even get to relax the next day, you know? It's like, uh. So yeah, he he definitely had a lot a lot to do to get that whole thing going and down. Well, Ben, yeah. we appreciate it because it was a fantastic event. We do. Great so, event. Keep keep it up. You're doing amazing work. 
So Gary, it, it cracks me up that you got Concrete because you were all about your little Purell bottle. I was Purell all the time. Left and right. And it was cracking me up because you'd whip it out and I'd be like, like you're making me feel dirty, but I'm like, I'm building up antibodies over here. You know, got to get a little germ. <laughs> and I and had like, like the little girly. Yeah. George, I had like but a like, little you're... girly jar of, it wasn't like the hand Purell. <laughs> it was from like, I don't know, some soap store. We had the little, little blue, like little pebbles inside of it. It was like. Per, like perfume scented it's yeah antimicrobial thingies you're ba- probably bath and body works you're cracking me up bath yeah, and people body had works, like yes, that's it full-on like wipes like they're whipping out wipes and purell and whatever but i can't believe you got it and then see my i ended up talking way too much so i woke up <laughs> i actually had trouble sleeping sunday but i woke up sunday so sore so 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 sore and i guess like i, I just over talked and I was like oh my gosh like and I was texting Gary and I was like I sound like a man like I can't talk right now like I'm scared to talk like it, what am I gonna do it was more and than that George though boy you're, you're skipping something so I thought you were like really sick because so I wake up um Sunday morning and I figured we're actually gonna go get you know go get some real breakfast and she was talking about going to this Tokidoki event at Fred 62 whatever I was like okay yeah. you know let's go there and she's like no like the thought that when I, you know, texted that to her, like, she, I got back, like, no, that just makes me want to throw up. Like, I thought you were all of a sudden had the flu because you were saying you were nauseous and just did not feel I good forgot. at all. Yeah, because I only got, like, three hours of sleep. Like, I had, we got back really late from bowling. My so- my throat was super sore. And then I felt like I needed to, like, still decompress from the day. So, like, just to help myself, like, I was, like, I was making post-its of like, this is things I had bought, how much I had paid for them. What did I buy it with cash or card? Like trying to figure out what I spent. And then I was like, okay, these are things I missed. I want to make sure I can go see tomorrow. So I was doing a little prep, but then between that and my throat being sore, like I had a really hard time sleeping. And so when I woke up, like, yeah, my throat was sore, but yes, I forgot. Like I felt, I felt atrocious and like literally like I'm texting Gary in the fetal position. He's talking about Fred 62. And I'm like, if I go eat crappy diner food, like I am literally going to throw up. Like <laughs> I cannot do this. So, and and he's like, well, I'm ready to come pick you up. So I'm like sitting there half dressed, like laying in my bed, like, all right, like I'm going to figure out how to do this. So like, I'm slowly moving myself out of bed. I think it was just for me, it wasn't like I was sick. It was almost just lack of sleep and, and all the craziness from the day before. But, um, we ended up uh, hitting up Einstein Bagels, and there was this, uh, like, it was like a coffee shop, Pete's Coffee, connected to it. And I was, like, talking to Gary about what can I do for a sore throat? Like, I don't know what, like, what can I take? What can I drink? Like, do I need to go get, like, medicine from a CVS or what? And he's like, you know, I've heard tea's really good. And I'm like, I don't really drink tea, but, like, I, I should try tea. Like, I'll do anything. And so he was waiting in the bagel line, and I went and got tea. And, and this non-tea drinker, I'm walking up there, and I'm like, uh, I, I need tea, please. And he's like, well, what tea? And I'm like, uh, <laughs> so I was like, I have a sore throat. He goes, Oh, I'd recommend chamomile. So I'm like done. And, um, it ended up being really good. It was very, it was like the perfect thing I needed to like, I'm sipping on my tea, waking up, eating bagels. We actually, it was a really cool spot that we found to kind of hang out in, um, that we were kind of sitting outside and, and then, uh, I don't know, I became addicted to tea, Gary. I, yeah, I you think you fall. became a tea lady. You should move to Europe. Because <laughs> literally, I got tea the next day at the airport, and then I got home and got more tea, and then I went to the grocery, and I bought a bunch of tea at the grocery because it sounds good. So it's, now, I, now I drink tea. It's supposedly good for you. You should like, go on Amazon and buy some of those cute, like, they have these uh, tea infusers, um, Teresa, where it's like in shapes of, I don't know, dinosaurs or a sloth that hangs on the end of your cup and you put your tea inside there. And I don't know, I'm not a tea person, so I don't know exactly what it all does, but they have some really cute ones. So you should, you know, start collecting those. Oh my gosh. It's another thing. Start collecting tea things. Well, and, and Scott Catler saved me because I, I was really sad. I was like, I almost wish I had a camelback of tea to like walk around with all day Sunday because it, it felt so soothing, but like the second I ran out, I felt like I wanted more, like the scratchiness was coming back. And so 
Scott Catler was like, I came prepared. He sent me this photo of like cough drops and I forget what else he had, but I was like, Scott's prepared. He has cough drops. I need to find his cough drops. So I'm like messaging him. I'm like, Scott, do you really have cough drops? And he's like, yeah. And I was like, can I have one? And so part of what I was hunting for on Sunday was Scott and his cough drops. So I could have a few on hand to, to keep the, the throat at bay. Yeah, you were, you were talking quite a bit. So I understand your, your throat going out there. So now you know. Teen uh, cough drops to get you through the designer con. But so let's take a brief moment to mention some of our sponsors. So the March Jam Toy Hour is sponsored by two awesome stores, 3DRetro.com and StrangeCatToys.com. If you head on over to StrangeCatToys.com, be sure to use promo code DOPE at checkout and you'll receive 10% off your entire order. And 3D Retro, they have a beautiful brick and mortar location out there in Burbank, adjacent California, Southern California. So head on over there and check that out. And there's also two amazing toy blogs for you. So for all your designer toy news, be sure to check out and follow SpankyStokes.com and TheToyChronicle.com. Teresa, you did get to uh, sort of man a booth while you were there too. So uh, Sad Salesman, he was on the show and we were talking about, he was saying how he was the only one there, George. And, you know, we were kind of saying, well, if, if you ever need a pee break, you know, text us. And so, you know, he would text us and we would go watch his booth and, uh, she got so excited to actually – so here's the weird thing, George. So I take over. You know, Teresa's off shopping or doing something. I don't know. And, and I'm, well, I'm going to go watch, you know, Sad Salesman's booth while, you know, give him some, maybe an hour to walk around and shop and go get some lunch and stuff. And so during that time I was there, George, maybe about 30 minutes, not one person stopped by to make a purchase. <laughs> the second Teresa shows up, it was like madness. Like we sold three wizards and a beach ghost and like – a 10 minute period all because she showed up it's weird well, yeah who what do they want to buy from a guy or from a girl yeah Come on. it was magic george is there something to having a, a a woman man the booth is there is she more approachable than say me eating my little brownie yes of course because you probably look <laughs> miserable like you don't want to be there and she's a girl who's all cute and attractive and wants to be talking to people and bubbly like yeah of course yeah, I was naming. I was naming his characters. George, he had a, a be- one of uh, uh, Eric's beach ghosts was like glittery. Yeah, and uh, it's like a glittery colorway. So I named him Edward Cullen after Twilight because vampires <laughs> yeah. glitter in the sun. So like people would come up and they'd like be looking at the beach ghost, and I was like, "Yeah, aren't these cute?" I was like, "This one's Edward, Edward Cullen." And so- <laughs> Well, Some people thought it was nuts, but I was like, you got to have fun. You got to hang out and talk no, to people. But that, I think that's you your know. calling, though, Teresa. Like, you were really, in, like, you're a good salesperson. You were like, you weren't selling it, but you were interacting and having fun with the people approaching the table. And I think they, like, I don't know. It just, it, I don't know if it was solely because of you and your interaction with them that made them want to buy things or if they just came to the booth knowing they were going to buy these things. But I don't know. Yeah. I, I think you found your calling as maybe, uh, a booth vendor or a you know a, a, a booth filler that could be our they, new thing. They call they call them booth babes, Gary. You booth can say it's okay. Booth babes. A booth babe. Booth babes. I don't know. The, okay. these t- I don't know what's PPC to say anymore. <laughs> so the, <laughs> you can always walking around. You can always see the booth that's not going to do well because it's the guy who's chair is all the way in the back corner and he's leaning down, looking at his phone, yeah. not looking at people yeah. like. Like, you know, that guy's not coming back next year because he's going to have a miserable time because no one's going to talk to him because, you know what? People are there that they want to talk to the people like this isn't like Comic-Con. Like people want to interact. They want to buy from the artists. They want to, like, talk to the people there. And if you're not ready to do that, you're not going to sell anything. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and and George, so literally I came over and then Gary's like. I got to, I got to take a pee break. Like you can do this. And I was like, what do I do? Like, what if someone needs to like buy something? So like really quickly, he gave me like a two second rundown of the program for like swiping a card. And of course, literally as Gary leaves, this girl comes up to the booth and is like, all right, I have to buy this. And I'm like, shit. (laughs) (laughs) And so I'm like, okay. So like, I'm acting all cool. I'm like, okay, sweet. Yeah. I'm like, cash your card. She's like card. I'm like, okay, I can do this. I can do this. But (laughs) I'm sitting there and I'm like, I'm like, I'm just sitting there trying to figure out this thing as I go. I figured it out though. I made it work. Got the first transaction. Of course, Gary's walking back as I'm doing it. I'm like, this is what happens when you leave. Like people, people start buying. So like, stay away, stay away. People, people are coming up here. 
after that, I thought I would come back and I would take over transactions, but no, like she ripped the phone out of my hand on the second transaction. She's like, no, I'm doing it. I'm going to do this. And so, yeah, but that, that room, George, it, when I was manning that booth, while he was walking. I think he planned this. I think he realized on Saturday, I don't remember the time when I was there, but I think Eric probably realized like, man, this was a really bad time to be at the booth because when I was there, it was direct sunlight through those giant windows on me. I mean, I was glowing, like radiating, like Edward Cullen, like just in sun rays <laughs> all around me. Like Teresa has a photo of it, just me just beaming in, in sun rays because it was warm sitting in that booth in that little hot. bit of period. It, it was hot. I have to say it was coming right in. Um, yeah, but the, air, the air was kicking, but it wasn't it wasn't cooling down because the heat and the bodies were making it hot in there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. It's it, it was fun to be behind the booth, and I don't know, I was having fun talking to people about the characters. People come up, and I'm like, "Oh yeah, isn't it so cute?" So, isn't it so Teresa? But um, yeah. So if you want to hire Teresa for five points or designer con next year, what's your what's your going rate, Teresa? Well, I don't know. I don't have a rate. Oh, trade for toys. Yeah, trade yeah. for toys. There you go. That's that's what we'll do, you know, what the convention's going for. We will be – I will be a booth filler, and you can be a booth babe. And we will relieve people so they can shop and take pee breaks and go get lunch. You know, it feels really weird to hear that, booth babe. I'm not a booth. That's weird. <laughs> <laughs> I, that's... I need a different name. A different name. I like alliteration and all, but, man, that's, that just feels weird. <laughs> I don't know. Cute companion. Okay, so – <laughs> Before we get talking about the big move, is there anything that you guys saw of any toys that were sort of leaked at the event, uh, 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 previews of things to come that you were saw at the event that you kind of want to mention? Anything that excited you? I saw some stuff. Well, let's hear it. Dish it out. One thing that, that was really cool, so we talked about Muji World and how they were here for the – um, for the first time. And so I don't know, for those who aren't familiar, they've done um, quite a few Kickstarters in the past. Um, they've done um, for some of their resin figures as well as a coloring book. And so um, I've been following them for, for a couple years now. And um, one of the things they had at this booth, and I, it's actually in uh, the last, if you scroll through my pictures I posted, it's in that last collage at the end. But it's basically, so Mr. Muju does a lot of drawings of kind of the environment of Muji World. So not just the characters, but like the the atmosphere. So like the hills and the buildings and the lands and stuff. And so he was really pushing her to start sculpting some of those pieces. So trying to create sort of these landscapes or hills to go along with the characters. And so she finally worked up um, this really, really cool sort of stacked uh, design of like essentially like a piece of the Muji world. So it's like little buildings on hills with like a little animal, a little owl on it. It's really hard to explain, but it's like almost like a tower of like buildings and hills. And so um, they had that on display and that's actually the next Kickstarter they're going to have um, at the beginning of next year. Um, And so it's called like Muji world buildings. So cool to see in person. So that was really exciting. And I'll, I'll be looking out for that Kickstarter. And then also, uh, Solgi was in town. I don't know. I don't know if she's ever been here, but she was at um, the booth with Peter Cato, and she's the one who has done all the different um, satyrs, so like Rory's and and all these different characters. And so she kind of worked with Peter to kind of learn resin. Is kind of blown up, and she's actually going to get her own little mini series through Pop Mart. And so she had those on display, and they're small, little cute figures that are about i don't know maybe three inches tall of all her different characters um and so that's going to be coming soon um super super excited for those i, I know pop marks uh, not necessarily typically sold here but i'm hoping there'll be a way to get them because um those were adorable cool you see anything george here there's i mean we talked about a lot of things we saw during the during the, sh- the whole episode but one thing that i didn't see but i found out about afterwards was uh, did you guys go to the sugar fueled booth in the first? No, we missed first that room? one. Sugar, it's sugar fueled and pink sugar fueled. It's Michael and Sarah. Um, I've been to many events. Like they always go to the three D three D retro events um, since they moved out here from Florida. And uh, you know, I've, I think I've even been to dinner with them because they're friends with Carlos and Ernesto. And I've been to a, a birthday dinner with them for like Carlos and Ernesto's birthday. 
but I've never actually talked to them before. Like I've never like really known them or like even introduced myself or anything. Cause I'm like that. I'm kind of like introverted when it comes to these events. I kind of really don't talk to people I don't know, but, uh, they invited Bruce, uh, Dr. A out to dinner after the con. So, you know, he's, you know, he's staying with me. So I always get to go to all the things he gets invited to. And, uh, I got to see, I guess during the event, uh, sugar fueled put on a, an art show. And what, what he did was he built a micro gallery and it's this tiny, I don't remember what the scale is, but it's this tiny gallery where if you look them up on Instagram, there's a video of it and you can see it and it's called the confection gallery or something like that. And he did an art show where he, he contacted all of these different artists that he knows or are friends with or who he admires. And he got them all to do these mini paintings. And it's like the, the basic rule was, you're not doing a tiny painting of like some random thing you would never do. He's like, he, he wants you to make what you would normally paint. Like if this, like imagine it was like a 16 by 20 painting, but just do it small. Huh. And it's, it was really awesome. Like he's got this, he had, he has the full gallery set up where like the outside of the building is tagged by an artist and like, you know, it looks like a tiny, you know, it's almost like a, it's almost like dollhouse type, yeah. thing where it's like it would be a dollhouse but it's an art gallery for a dollhouse you know mm-hmm. and uh the art, the art show was amazing like there was so many amazing artists involved in this thing and then he was selling a set of prints of the like so you could buy the paintings if you were you know if you were first in line obviously because they sold out pretty quick because imagine getting like you know an artist like joe ledbetter or something like that for you know like two hundred dollars they just, you know, that kind of original art just isn't for sale that that often at those prices. OK. Um, so imagine now that like once the art is sold out, there's nothing left but prints. So you can now you can get prints of all these things. And they're like he did them to scale. So the prints are one to one to the painting. And they're oh, let me see. I have one here. Let me get a let me get an actual measurement for you. Sure. They are uh, inch and a half wide by two inches tall. Oh my gosh, so teeny! And with the trading card, like the trading card prints he made with Sidekick Labs, and the trading card pack actually comes with the little fake stick of gum, just like when we were kids, like the little wax pack stick of gum. Awesome! And it was just really cool to see this. I, I wish I had seen it at the show, but yeah, I mean, it even has gallery lights and everything. Like everything lights up, and it has like lights on the ceiling, like pointing at the paintings, and it's it's really oh, interesting. Man. So. uh and he said he's, you know, he has, this was his first group show in that gallery. He's done two solo shows so far, but now that that was his first group show. So it was, uh, it was pretty cool to see. And I, I completely had missed it. You know, I didn't, I don't know. They were in the front room, I think. Um, and I just didn't get to that section and never saw the little gallery, but. It's a great idea. Can, I love it. Yeah. Go, go look them up on Instagram. It's sugar fueled. Just type that, like search for that and you'll find it. Oh, very cool. Oh my gosh. You know, I, I'm so, this is like one of those things where I'm like, man, I'm bummed. It's like, you feel like you see so much and yet somehow you still miss a ton. And yeah. that's not there like such a fun a, idea. There seemed to be a lot of custom shows this year. Like there was, uh, there was that, you know, obviously that one that I just talked about. There was the, the Scott's uh, Broke Piggy show with the mm-hmm. shard figure. Yeah. There was the, the Kyle Kirwan uh, Bloom show out yeah, front. There was, Vagabond. there was a number of different art shows this year, I feel. Yeah, no, there was. I remember. Yeah. Seeing, so I we, remember seeing the Kyle Kerwan uh, yeah. Vagabond show, and then also right next to it, or just down the way, was also the uh, Thousand Toys Synthetic Human Custom Show. So yeah, there was a lot of uh, little custom events going on, a lot of customs just throughout the entire convention at random booths. So, what did I see that I really? Oh, um, horrible, adorable. So they had that squash a little, squish a little. Um, Oxalotl, you know, kind of squishy toy. It's kind of like a stress ball. So I picked up one of those. It's yeah. awesome. And I sort of wonder, is, is squishy going to sort of become the new thing in the designer toy scene, do you think? Because I also saw that uh, Max Toy Company had a little, um, not as squishy as the horrible, adorable Squashalotl, but a little squishy, very soft, malleable um, Nagora like toy. And uh, I, I just kind of wonder if that's going to be kind of the new thing. Yeah. You know, people experimenting with a a lot more softer, squishy element to their toys. I and hope get, so. Just get back to the more soft vinyl of it. Well, it's uh, almost like, have you seen those squishies, George? So like, like the literal, like almost like a stress ball, but even softer. Even softer. It's like that. 
like you it's like a big thing that's starting to boom there's a lot of like blind bags and blind boxes for kids but like you can it's like a i don't know like a panda or are they kind of like that rubbery feel though that gross it's not gross um i don't know think think like a stress ball but like really soft and when you squish it like you can really squish it down it's like super super squishy and I, I would love to see, like, I love that Horrible Adorables was finding a way to kind of incorporate that kind of element. I'd love to see it more because I think it's super fun. And we don't really see a lot of that kind of blending into the designer toy world yet. I'll send you one, George. I'm going to find you a a fun squishy. And then you can squish to your heart's content. You it's go. not the gross, weird, rubbery, slimy type of things. No, okay. it's, it's really cool. And I love that they're, you know, experimenting and trying new things and not just going straight to resin or something else. I mean, this... This form or whatever material, I, I can't. I'm not sure the chemistry behind it, but it works and actually fits the, their aesthetic really well. I think it was really cool. So I picked up one. I saw a bunch of other people picking them up. They had them in multiple colors. So um, maybe you know, who knows? I, I don't even think they knew they were going to have it in Designer Con. They just kind of showed up and um, they had them, and they were fantastic. So I'd love to see more of those from them. I also got to see that hairball that Carlos had. It's called it's called the hairball we talked about on the show. Yeah. Two hairs fighting in the cube. Originally when I saw it, it was all black, but I saw it Carlos's cube. There's going to be a two color version of the two hairs kind of they're kind of like romantically entangled or maybe some people might see that they're fighting and, and wrestling around, but I see it as them kind of like entangled in a weird like cube embrace, but there's um color comes in two different colors. There's like in that little cube is a white rabbit and a, a black rabbit. And I think, I don't know if he had those for sale at the booth, but I believe that's going to be available for online. Is that correct, Teresa? Yeah, I think he sold some at the booth, but they were so popular that he decided to also open a pre-order for them as well. So I don't know if that okay. was just at Decon or what, but um, but yeah, I... I had only seen the black as well, and then we went to his booth and saw the two-tone one. I really liked that version because it really highlighted. It I know there's kind of value in both, but I really liked seeing each shape highlighted. So you could really kind of see how the bunnies intertwined with each other. Yeah, it was easier um, to read for me. It was instantly recognizable yeah. as the two rabbits, and I love that piece. Um, so I thought that was really interesting. I love the stink boxes that Andrew Bell did with Jason Lamone. I saw a lot of people yeah. walking around with those. It's nice to see them on display. Like, what was it, like six, 16 or 20 different colors could be pulled from those boxes? I know we picked up a bunch of them. Uh, those were a lot of fun. So anyone who's interested in those, you can go to deadzebra.com, uh, pick up some of those. And then and I what? got a heart one. You did get Woo! your heart one. So, she George, got... I don't know if you saw those, but a few of them had, like, a heart-shaped fur patch on the front of the cat. So, of course, those were the ones that I was hunting. Oh, it's, and... so, it's so Teresa. It's yeah, that, so Teresa. That is not a George toy right there. <laughs> but it's so cute. Well, and George I'm is allergic to, to cats, aren't you, George? Well, I'm allergic to those I... cats. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm allergic to cats, but I'll take vinyl cats and... any day. Okay, so we went to... Um... You know, Macy McKinney, Simon Says Macy's Booth. And originally when she was on the show, she was telling us that she was designing a couple Gotcha Pawn series and she might have them there. So we stopped by and they weren't available for purchase at her booth, but we did get to see the painted prototypes and they are so much fun. So many cute designs or Teresa designs um, and <laughs> just adorable, really, just a really fun, well thought out series. I think there was three different series. And uh, what was really neat about them was they're small, like you would expect gotcha pun, but they were heavy, like heavy, solid resin figures. And so I was not expecting that at all, but they were really great. And it sounds like they're really close to being available. So I'd say follow, make sure that you're following Simon Says Macy on Instagram. And uh, I don't know, maybe in the next few months, those gotcha pawns will be available. They were awesome. Yeah, it is serious. The series is called Capocalypse, and, um, you know, from what I understand, I think it might be that they, they do it at events because they really want it to be like True Gotcha Pond where you kind of go up and have to turn the wheel and pop yeah. one out. Yeah. Um, so I know I, I know we talked about whether or not she'd stick them online, but, but yeah, they're super fun. I personally like the – she had a series called Chubbies, so it was basically like really chubby animals, um, so like 
really fat little octopus and really fat little alligator or crocodile. And so those are the ones uh, that that I I personally found were my favorite. But she also had mushrooms and some like donut shaped ones. But yeah, it was super fun series. So it was cool to see those. You also had a bit of, you know, I think I started a bit of a stir. I posted your, um, those tree boy stands and a bunch of people thought you were yeah. building some tree boy shelves. I think I had to disappoint people, but, um, I know that, um, stand up art, is it stand up art? Um, stand up art, yep. they're, um, they're working to create a fun little paper cut out of your, your tree boy character. So that was also there to kind of check out. And yeah, they were um, supposed to have a giant. Was it going to be like a six or seven foot one? But um, I don't know what happened, but that was not on display, but they had, did have one about, I don't know, three feet tall. They were in three different sizes, um, but they realized they want to make it a little easier. So there's going to be no glue available, but it was super heavy cardstock, like not cardstock, even more than, I don't know how to explain it, but like foam, almost like foam. It's, I don't know. It's it's really a three foot tall paper toy. Yeah, um, and it was going to be the tree boy that I designed uh, a couple of years ago, and um, they were going to have it available for purchase. You would buy it flat, and then you would just kind of you know assemble it. It would stand you know about three foot tall in you know your collection. And uh, but we learned that you know there's a few. I guess that version had to be glued, and so we want to figure out how to assemble it um, without glue being needed. Like you know, anyone who's new to paper toys, it's got to be simple dumbed down for them and um so we don't want to you know deter any sales away from that so maybe next year at designer con we'll have that all figured out and uh yeah it'll be cool so does this mean you're coming back you're going back to the oh, dude, I'm, I'm, I'm back george i'm back i'm not even no. with the He's change back. oh no i love it i loved every minute of it i think it's just yeah i think really i think having the family kind of deterred me it was just, I just didn't want to leave the family. I, I feel bad leaving my wife behind with the kids. It's a lot of work, you know, you know, taking care of a couple of toddlers. But the kids are older, a little more easier to manage now. So, yeah, getting back out there, five points, designer con. I, I want to go to all of them. I am all in. It's so much fun. Woohoo! Wow. I don't know that I want to vend. I think I might be over vending, but I definitely I love walking around in that carefree, do what you want, talk to people. I, I think I've realized I'm not one to get stuck behind the booth anymore. I want to just be that floater roaming around and maybe help out the occasional person, you know, man their booth or whatever. But no, I, I, I'm ex- very excited to go to the next one and the next five points and all that stuff. So yeah. Awesome. I got the bug. Yeah. yeah. Let's do it. Yeah. No, but be uh, fun. real yeah. quick, I want, do want to mention that five points has announced that they're going to be, changing locations and they do have a new um a date set up for this year so um with designer con pretty much wrapping up it's time to start preparing for the next big convention which i think is going to be five points come june uh the new dates for five points fest is going to be june 2nd and 3rd and the new location is moving away from manhattan and going to be in brooklyn which um i don't mind you know manhattan's fun to be in but i think if it's going to be in brooklyn it's going to help potentially reduce costs for maybe vendor booze or you know definitely hospitality maybe by a little bit so um yeah looking forward to it how do you feel about it being just a month away from comic-con though george i think that comic i it, i think that san diego comic-con is dead for the most part as far as far as designer toys go so i don't think that's going to affect too many travelers that are going to that event and it's only two weeks away from the last um, five points that was held. It was held May 20th and May 21st. So it's not like it's it's only two weeks closer. So I don't know. I, I wish it was still in May a little bit. but I There's just think... something about the, like, when you hear June, you're like, crap, that's almost right. July. That's almost Comic-Con. It does. But I don't think, I really don't think many vendors are excited about doing um, San Diego anymore. Now that we have five points in Designer Con, I think most collectors are probably not making the venture out to San Diego anymore. So I don't think it's going to be that big of a hindrance. I think it's great because I'm not going to Comic-Con, so I think it'd be yeah. – I'm all, I'm all about yeah. just having Decon five points. That's fine with me. I'm bummed about the move only in the reason that it has, makes me have to wait two more weeks to go. I'm excited to go. I, I want to go out there and have that convention experience again. I, I'm on that designer con high, and I want to you know hang out with my friends and – be in that you know state of euphoria again, and that's, I'm going to get that again in June at uh, Five Points. Nice. So that'll be fun. And speaking of moving, so you know, 
Five Points is moving to Brooklyn, and Designer Con's going to be moving to Anaheim. And this year it's going to be a, a three day event. So, what do you guys think? Are you looking forward to the move and it being three days? No, let me clear something up. As you say, three days. It's technically it's two days and a preview night. Okay, explain that. That um, what I and I kind of wish that that was put in the book. I wish that Ben would have wrote that instead of saying three days. Okay. Um, so Friday will be a preview night. He hasn't set the hours yet, but uh, it's not going to be like Friday from nine a.m. to six. It's going to okay. be Friday, like you know, kind of like Comic Con, like four to seven or you know five to five to nine or something like that. Like it'll be some kind of an evening like preview night and then saturday sunday so okay. it's not a full day friday i love that so much okay. more i didn't i do i see yeah. i do too i wish he would have said like i wish he would have told that because i think everybody hearing like oh no it's three days everyone got like weirded out like that's too long but i think a two days and a preview night is fine yeah, yeah pre- preview nights are fine because there's most people are setting up on friday anyways so to be a- open for the another I don't know, three hour periods for the premium night is, I think is awesome. And is it going to be only VIPs kind of like how San Diego does it? Only VIPs are going to be in. Uh, I don't know. He's still working all that details out. I'm not sure. Okay. That makes, that was the one gripe that I heard people saying was, Oh my God, three days. And I think just doing it two days with that preview night, I think that takes off that edge a little bit. I, yeah, I do too. I I don't know why he didn't mention that. Like that should have been like the number one thing. Like it's Friday, you know, two two days of the preview night. Like because all it does is add yeah. a couple hours of preview, which is great. Yeah, yeah, and most, I love almost, that. Yeah, and almost everyone is coming in Friday afternoon, so it's not like they're going to have to change their schedule. I mean, they can they don't have, except for the vendors. The vendors will of course have to be set up, but any collectors they're usually showing up the Friday night, so the lineup early that morning. So I don't think this is going to change most collector schedules at all. The only other downside that I've heard, and this is where designer con has fallen to this in the past is that again, it's back on the weekend before Thanksgiving. And as many people know, that's a very expensive time to book flights and hotels and stuff like that. Everything's going to yeah, be and a little I think pricey, that was, so. that was an unfortunate thing that he had to do this for this next year. But I think it's he's switching it back the year after. It's just Perfect. he couldn't he couldn't book that weekend, uh, the the weekend that he wanted, which was the same as this one. Um, he couldn't he couldn't book it there next year. Do you know the reason for the move? Is it just because they outgrew the Pasadena Convention Center? Uh, I think it's a little bit of outgrow, and I think it was a little bit. Uh, he had mentioned that uh, Hall C um, Pasadena had booked for a different company next year, and he oh. can't like he can't not have hall C like he can't like go smaller again. So he had to find a new place. Okay. It's almost, I feel like a blessing in disguise though. Cause you know, we've been talking about hall C and how it's, it's kind of this sort of side stepchild a little bit, which I know they in every intention try to include them, but I think there's going to be a lot of benefit. Like we've been talking about one big room where everyone can be. So, yeah. you know, I, I like it, you know, and I think the preview night is an awesome idea that makes me really excited. Um, You know, the only other things I heard was just, you know, Anaheim and how, you know, people are really used to Pasadena and the, you know, the restaurants nearby and the places you can stay and there's a lot of Airbnb options. So I don't know how much that'll change um, in the Anaheim location, you know, if it'll be difficult being near Disney, harder to park, busier, harder to find places to stay. But, um, so I don't know if you all are more familiar with that area, but th- oh, those are the only other things I had heard. There's definitely a lot more places to stay cause it's Disneyland. <laughs> you have like every, <laughs> every hotel imaginable is right there. Um, you still have, you'll still have Airbnbs in the area that aren't too far away. Uh, eateries, you have those galore. Cause again, you're at Disneyland. Um, there is, I mean, it is walking distance to downtown Disney, which you don't have to pay to go to downtown Disney. It's, it's the open yeah. shopping area of, you know, outside of Disneyland. And, you know, that's, it's literally a walk across the street from the convention center. Oh, so awesome. I think it's going to have a lot more options for people who maybe their whole family can come now and they can oh, do no, while the family goes to <laughs> Disneyland. George, what are you doing? My wife and kids are going to come now. Like, yeah, it's perfect. Bring the wife con- and kids. No, designer con was like my retreat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you don't have to hang out with them. They'll go to Disneyland. No, you know how expensive that is, George. It's like two hundred bucks a person to get in. I'll have no budget. No, 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 no. 
<laughs> exactly. Funny. This, this is such a game changer. I, you can't have a convention in Anaheim and tell your wife and kids that you're right across the street from Disneyland. Of course they're going to want to go. Well, the funny thing is, you're not going to Disneyland. You're not going to, you know, you're not going to go in there. You're not going to pay the money for that. So even if it doesn't matter how close it is for you, you'll still not go to Disneyland. No, but I want to go to Disneyland, just not during DesignerCon. Like, I, I want to go to Disneyland. I love Disneyland. I want to go there with my kids. We're not like you, George, where we live in Southern California. We just can't go to Disneyland every single weekend. For us, it's, gosh, every few years. So, no, I would absolutely love to go to Disneyland just not at the same time as uh, designer coming. Well, see, then you go to Disneyland on Thursday. You come in early. You go to Disneyland Thursday. Then I you think do we need to night. stay. George, will you stay with us in like a Disney themed hotel while we dress as princesses and princes oh, together? Do I get to dress we... as a princess? <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> oh, I'll be yeah. freaking Aladdin. <laughs> Well, that sounds fun. I think I know a lot of people were kind of down on the move and kind of what you were saying, Teresa, that we've all kind of acclimated to, you know, restaurants and where to walk to and the events. We were all very familiar with the Pasadena area, especially like uh, the international people. Um, they kind of just know the areas. There's no one likes change and, you know, that's that what stuff, it is. But, is change um, is scary for people. So it's yeah. like. But I think it's the the first year will take a bit of getting used to. And then, you know, as it keeps going, I think it'll just get better and better. Like, I think this is going to be good. Just may, my whole thing is just getting everybody in the same room so we can stop with that. My yes. room's not as good and your room is better and this room's too dark, but it's too also too light. Like, you know, like, yeah, yeah. just get everybody in the same room. We're on the same field. Everyone's playing together and it's going to be awesome. I agree. Yeah. I'm looking forward to it. So, um. All right, guys. I have George. I have I have one other request for future events. Okay. We need some non-black event T-shirts. What's <laughs> up with all she, the freaking black T-shirts everywhere? She was complaining about that a lot, a lot, George. Um, uh, why are all the shirts black? I I don't think I wore a black shirt any of the days. No, but like for vendors when they're doing like designer concerts, like no, all like almost all of the Johnny shirts. Cupcake shirts were black. A lot of the um, the other vendors were all selling black shirts. No one's thinking about probably mainly the women who want, you know, purple or blue or pink. There's no, I don't know. Everything's designed very masculine. Yeah. Like all the designer con shirts were black. I want some pretty colors up in here, George. Well, you're Help. probably the only one, and that's probably no. why. No, <laughs> I can't be the only one. They're, they like need like most... a really cutified, like a really cutified version of a logo. People will buy that up. Just wait. Just do it. Let's see. We need cute. <laughs> we'll see. We're not going to be able to get a Marshall meetup next year. Being at Disneyland, everyone's going to go to Downtown Disney or Disneyland or. It's well, be have really the Marshall meetup at Downtown Disney. Like have at one of like the Rainforest Cafe meetup okay. or something. Yeah. Well, well we, we also could... talked about. Gary and I were also, I was also saying like, we were talking about the, the board game idea, George. And I was like, you know, I love board games. We could just like, we could like hold up in a room and play cards and picture yeah. Mary for all I care. Like we could totally just hang out in that way. We I don't could know. Be the most, I think you and I are different. We sound boring. Everyone else wants <laughs> to go out and drink and have fun and whoa. And you and I are a little more low key. We would be fine. Hold up in a room ordering a pizza and playing games. But I don't know if other people would, I'm, I know there's other people out there that are as boring as us. So I would love to have a, a game night or we talk about we're in a, a scene of artists. How fun would it be instead of a panel? I, I we could talk about that another time. I don't know what panels are going on this year. I feel like the news of what panels are going on didn't get relayed out there. So I really don't know too much what panels went on, but it'd be fun to have a side event of like a Pictionary with artists. Um, like win, lose, or draw style, but with, you know, designer toy people. I think that would be fun. Yeah. We'll see. Or even just one of those, like, drawing events, like drink and draw that people do all the time. Um, yeah. Without the drinking. Yeah. Yeah. I, you could teach everyone how to sketch a whooper. It'd be like, like the Pinot's yeah. Palais, you paint and wine, but this that time it sounds awful to me. That sounds like work. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm, like I'm an it's instructor so how to draw the whooper looper. 
You know, it's so funny, George. We were, Gary and I were like, we should be, like, good. Like, we should be social. Like, Sunday, we should, like, hide some Marsham stuff. And I was like, Gary could draw, like, a cute little sketch, and we'll hide it somewhere around the convention, and some the first one to find it could get it, like a free yard drop. But we totally failed. We, t- yeah. <laughs> we got caught up. <laughs> we were all caught up in the event, being there. And I was like, oh, man, we could have done so. We'll be better next year. We'll try to do something fun. I'll try to make Gary sketch something, like sketch the the Martian mascot or something cute, and we'll we'll hide it somewhere. We'll be uh, better. Such a fun time. I mean, yeah, the depression setting in. I miss you guys. Um, hope to see you both at Five Points, maybe. George, I'm thinking. I'm thinking about it. I don't know. I don't know about Brooklyn. <laughs> well, luckily you can just go over to the bridge and, uh, you know, back to Manhattan. What about you, Teresa? You think you might go? I want to. You know, if this if this hell house of mine stops being mean to me. Oh. But, Maybe uh, we can get Vin, my plastic heart, to Airbnb in his shop out. I'll sleep on the floor. <laughs> or, or Andrew Bell. <laughs> yeah, You have a, a studio, right? Rent, rent it out to me for the weekend. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> or Sad Salesman. I think he's in Brooklyn. I'll sleep on your floor. I'll, I'll bring a slumber bag. I don't want to pay $300 a night bag. for some... Slumber bag. Slumber bag. Sleeping bag. I like it in theory, but yeah, I don't know. I mean, we were talking about your whole Airbnb experience and uh, you having to oh, leave your shoes outside and you're George. scared to eat donuts okay, in your room. Okay, like, okay. Let me explain like, this real quick. Yeah. Hold, on, hold on. I'll, 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 I'll do this one last story and then we got to wrap this up. So, George, I do the Airbnb. Sounds great. I've done it before. It was fine. Um, but this year, the guy was just super clean. So I show up at the door. Um, it's you know very communicative and all that stuff. But I show up at the door, and there's like a shoe rack outside the front door. Please leave your shoes outside the door. We have slippers for you inside. So I'm like, oh great, clean freak. So I you know I put my shoes outside in the little drawer and put my slippers on. I did not feel comfortable at this place. It was they were there. It was a shared bathroom. The uh, I walk into the bathroom. The previous guests, so both rooms upstairs were uh, Airbnb'd out, and I walk into the bathroom. The fart fan is on. I go to use the hand towel. It was drenched like someone dropped it in the toilet. It was soaked. <laughs> and oh. uh, just knowing he was a clean freak, so we, like I said, we went to Ralph's that night, so I picked up a little uh, a little thing of, I don't know, donut holes or something like that. I was planning to just sit in my room, no TV in the room. And uh, I woke up, and he was. I just did not feel comfortable eating in that room. So the second I woke up, Showered, got dressed, I went down to my car, and I sat in my car eating my donuts while I just felt more comfortable in my car than the room I paid for. That sucks. And, uh, it sucked, but it was fine. But it was... I mean, at least you had a place so to weird. shower. That's really all you I, need. That's really – the bed was comfortable and everything, but I, next time I do Airbnb, it's going to be either the people aren't going to be there or it's going to be in like a detached guest house or something like that. No more doing it where the people are going to be there. Yeah, no, that's weird. Yeah. So yeah, let's, that... let's, let's wrap it up. So that was our designer con experience. Uh, we are going to have an episode next week. So everyone have a great Thanksgiving this week and we will talk to you then. So why don't you both take a minute and let everyone know where they can find you. Sure. Uh, so, uh, Teresa Hawkins, find me on Instagram, tmhawk24. George. And I'm at Double G Toys on Instagram, I think. Is that, that's what I am, right? At Double G Toys on Instagram. Uh, <laughs> Jessica, we filmed, we recorded a little early tonight, so she couldn't be here to pitch in with her stories, but she sends her best <laughs> to everybody. Okay. It yeah, it's very it was great meeting her. Yes. Oh, and can I just say, Jess, that probably the highlight of my event was your whole Brady Bunch photo idea and oh. <laughs> trying to get George and Gary and I behind a cur- curtain to take that photo. Seriously, my favorite photo of the entire event. I cannot believe she got you all to do that with me. <laughs> uh, I think that's going to be our promo image this week, so enjoy. Oh, great. Um, <laughs> <laughs> So I am Gary Ham. You can find me at superham.com or Gary Ham on Instagram. This has been the Marsham Toy Hour. We do this every week, not because we have to, but because we want to. All right. So until our next transmission, we're signing off. Bye. Gary, oh. we forgot to mention something. That was what? a long one. What did we forget, Teresa? The biscuits. Oh.
Nasty. George, I delivered horrible, adorable their biscuits, but in the oh. form of almond joys. <laughs> that's not a biscuit. Well, it's the close. It's the best, next best thing. It's what they wanted, but that's they risked it for the biscuits, and the biscuits in their case were almond joys, oh, and they that's won. Awesome. <laughs> but I forgot to mention that. Well, all right. Well, let's just go ahead and record again. Let's do it. Three, two. Toys. All I really want is toys. And in the morning it's toys. Cause in the evening it's toys. I like the way that they look. So much goodness in my nook. I love the way that they smell. From my plastic heart to Lulu Bell. Back in the day. There was San Diego Comic Con. Now there's Five Points MD Con. Blind boxes are fun to play. I pulled a duplicate, much to my dismay. I wanted the other colorway. She asked to trade, I said okay. Then hit the row with no delay. Kid Robot Unbox Mighty Jacks are producing to the max. The Toy Chronicle and Spanky Stokes Posting stuff to make me broke My paycheck goes to my plastic heart Toy purchases are off the charts I can't spend another dime But my displays be looking fine All these toys are mine, mine, mine Toys in the kitchen, toys in the bedroom, toys in the laundry, and in the bathroom. Toys, that's all I really want is toys. The grotesque and super cute. Take them out and play with them. I ought to whip out my toys. Toys, 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 toys. Sorry.